Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of our advanced beginner slash level one ballet class. Wow, episode four. I can't believe we've been doing this for almost a month already. Well, I hope if you've been doing it since the beginning that you've been enjoying yourself. I know I certainly have been to help you experience the joy of dance at home while we're all stuck here. Anyway, my name is Ian Parsons, and it is my great privilege to be a member of the artistic staff at Canada's National Ballet School, which is the community that so many of you are a part of. And if you're not a part of our community, let's say you're tuning into these classes for the first time, I sincerely hope that you will consider becoming a part of our community and our little family over on Jarvis Street once we can all reunite back in the studio once more. Uh, so today we're continuing on in the same vein that we've been doing, doing our class in whatever space we have. So in terms of safety, make sure you have enough space, you're not giving a black eye to any of the people that you live with, that you're holding on to something secure, maybe the back of the chair, the corner of your bar corner, whatever it is for you, just make sure it's nice and secure. And also that the floor that you're dancing on is not too slippery. If it is, let's say you're dancing on tile, you might want to just think about putting down a yoga mat or something like that, just to make sure that everything is nice and safe. The music that we're going to be using today, as always, is from the absolutely wonderful Rob Thaller. You can find his music on Apple Music and on Spotify. You can also buy them on the iTunes store. Uh, he is an absolutely wonderful musician who I have the great honor of working with every single day in the professional ballet program. Well, as I said last week, not right now, uh, but when we're there, we're a team, pl team players and I hope that you really enjoy listening to his music. So, with all that out of the way, let's get going. So one thing I forgot to acknowledge beforehand uh, in that little introduction was if you've joined us for the first couple of episodes, you might have noticed something different. Yes, this is my COVID-19 chic haircut that I'm sporting today. So I figured by the time we all go back to normal, I might look back to normal again. So you get a little sneak preview of the buzz cut. Anyway, starting in first position. For our warm up, we go five, six, and seven, eight. Turn to front, turn to right leg. One and two, flex, three and four, Point five, six, plie seven, close on plie stretch. Same thing side. One and two, and a flex, flex, and a point. Remember, you have lots of joints in your feet. Plie and stretch to the back. One, two, flex, three, four, point five, six, Plie, seven, close on plie, eight. Put your right hand on the center of your sternum and we just do a little circle. Forward, two, to the side, three, four. Nice, easy back and neck. Six, seven, eight. And then you repeat all of that to the other side. Slow tendu act, two, flex, four, point, six. Plie, seven, as you close, stay on the same level. And Eight. Same thing to the side. Two. Flex that up. Point that up. Seven and eight. Back to flex that up. Point to do. Seven and eight. Left hand on your sternum this time and you'll circle towards that arm. So down towards the left. Round the back. Woo! Don't fall over like I just did. And eight to finish. joints. You have that metatarsal, all those toes. Think of your foot like your hand. Right arm to the center, circle. Side. 
left to the back. dive directly into plies. Starting in first position, arm in preparatory, we go five, six, just a breath, seven, eight. Now we do something controversial. We turn in, turn in, two, demi-plie, in parallel, three, four, staying in plie, we turn out, bring your arm to first, five, six, stretch, seven, eight, grand plie, grand plie, and three, four, ton de balle seconde, five, six, play second, seven, eight, same thing in second, turn in, two, now plie, keep your pelvis nice and upright, three, four, turn out on plie, five, Six, stretch, seven, eight, allonge, grand plie, and two, and try that arm coordination now. Four, bubble tendu, side, six, close fifth front, seven, eight. Now this one feels a little bit strange, but we're still going to turn in. Turn in, two, plie, three, four, turn out, five, Six, stretch, seven, no grand plie, but still with the port de bras. Plie, two, and three, four, tendu side, five, six, like we've been doing, go back to where you came from. Seven, eight, breathe, port de bras, like last week. Forward, two, find your flat back position, and four, recover, five, Six, arm to third, seven, eight, up and back, one, two, three, four, make sure you breathe there, five, six, and seven, to finish. Take a breath. Turning in. Demi plie. Both legs out, stay down. And open. Grand plie. Tendu side. Lower second. Same thing. second side, I want you to think a little bit like we were talking about last week. And if you saw the class last week, you might remember that we were talking about the way down is the easy part of a plie. It's the way up 
where it's really easy to start rotating everything in. So as you're coming up, you have to feel even more like you're trying to turn your legs inside out. So you get a preview of that feeling. We turn in, we plie. It's this moment that you want to feel when you stretch your legs immediately after that, but also when you're coming up out of that grand plie. Remember that turnout, I like to say, well, many great teachers before me have said this, but turnout is a verb, not a noun. It's a thing that you do, not a position that you enter. Take a breath. Turning in. Think of those laser pointers. And out. for this one this week and we go five six and seven eight tendu front one two now we do the step that we call pour le pied literally means for the foot lower three four recover five six and seven eight and side it's for the foot because you go through the whole thing three and four, really roll. Five, like a snake. And close. Eight, to the back. One, two, lower. Three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight. Now we'll do once around the block with an arm. So we go. One, a two, and three, a four, and five. A six and seven. Close back. Guess what? Reverse the whole thing. Turn you back. A two, lower three, a four, and up. Six, seven, eight. Side, two, lower, two, back, da, da. And a front, two, lower, three, four. Once around the block, this time starting from the front. One, two, or that's six, isn't it? And seven, and eight. And we'll finish there. So, just one quick note. For those of you who've done fourth position, I don't want you to think about a lower to fourth position. So this is, we're not doing the toe come back to the heel and making sure you put yourself, you know, with that one foot between in fourth. We're actually more concentrating on rolling through the foot. So I'll just go here so you can see. So I turn to front, literally put your toe down right there and roll through your foot. And I don't really care that much. Well, I always care about turnout, but I, we don't need to think about this. What I want you to concentrate on is that rolling through the foot. 
Remember, we keep talking about that snake-like foot that we're looking for. Front. Once around the block. Reverse. Really roll through that metatarsal. Oh, I just noticed I wasn't breathing. I hope you were. Now, going into the second side, we really were thinking very nicely about rolling through that foot on the first side, but also when you lower down, I know I said I wasn't talking about lowering into fourth, however, if we could please resist the urge for that to happen. Yes, that's very easy. You want to really make sure, again, it's those laser pointers on your sitting bones. I might have to have them installed because I talk about them so much. <clears throat> so whenever you lower down, they really want to still be going down to the floor or when we go to the back, same thing. We're not letting this pinch there in the front. You really keep straight down to the floor. And I really mean straight down to the floor because it's also very easy woo, to start pointing them that way. So you want right that happy medium. Or if you want to think about it as, wow, English. If you want to think about it another way, if you imagine that your pelvis is a bowl, you want to make sure that you don't tip anything out of it to any direction. Yeah, it always has to stay upright so everything can stay inside the bowl. To the front. sitting bones. Once around. Really make a statement with every tondu. Here I am, to the back. To the side. And you can put your arm in second or not, whatever works best for you. Once around again. Hello. Bonjour. Aloha. I can't think of another one. So, baton jeté. This one's a little bit quick, but I'll do it a little bit under tempo. I'll do you a favor for the first one. So we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Jete one, two, three, and four. Close five, six, seven, eight. To the side, one, close front, three, and four. Close five, wait, seven, eight. To the back, this is different. Three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Three slow jetés, three, four plié, and prepare for the reverse. And then you repeat it from the back. So now you do the one with the pique. So it's one, two, three, and four, close five, six, and wait, eight, side, two, three, pique, 
five, and wait. Three slow to the front. One, two, and three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. Third time, two, three, four. Please just leave your arms down to finish. Now, if you feel comfortable with it, you can use an arm for all of them. So you can go front, one, two, three, and four, five, on seven, eight, change your arm. Seven, eight, side will be in second, back will be in arabesque. You open, do your nice plie, and then reverse it with the arm. I'll do it without the arm on the first side, and then with the arm on the second side. However, one thing, it's not that slow. It's probably about this fast. One, a two, a three, and four, five, six, and change. A one, a two, a three, and four, five, six, and change. One, two, a three, about that sort of speed. So we'll put the fire up underneath you a little bit. Up to the back, slow. Remember last week? Where does that supporting hip face? Reverse. Closing back. Slow to the front. Now before we do the second side, you heard me on the first side say something about where your supporting hip is facing. So if you were here for last week, episode three, I'll just cast your mind back to that. So remember we talked about the headlights and you want to make sure that your hips, when you go to the back, remember it's not physically possible to keep this one both here. So this one, remember, like an expensive car, will sort of anticipate the corner a little bit, but your supporting one still needs to stay most definitely facing where you're facing. Yes, not going into the ditch. So we really want to think about that going to the back on the second side. I'll use an arm this time. What are you reaching for? Diamonds, ice cream, or money? Again. Sorry, in first position, and we go five, six, and seven, eight. Tendu devant into rond de jambe. Going front, and two, and back. Close. Pass through first again, on de And six, and seven, and eight. Third time, front to the side to the back, breathe, plie five, close directly to that plie, rise six, little allongé, seven, and eight, and we reverse, back, side, and front, close, back, side, it's not this fast, close, back, side, front, breathe, plie five, six, allongé, seven, and eight. Now, like we did last week, and in the warm-up, hand on your sternum. You go a little bit of a rond de corps toward the bar. Forward, two to the side, three, four rounds to the back, five, six, and recover, eight. Now, try it with an arm, so just a little bit of an arm. In first, two, and side, in third, like a side bend. Round to the back, into your back bend. And seven, and eight, to finish. On de Remember that leg is constantly spinning round. Third 
third time. side of this exercise, I really want you to think about that standing hip. So the one that you're on, making sure that when we go into rond de jambe, that we haven't taken a lovely trip to Hawaii at that moment. Yes, so we really need to think about keeping that nicely still, kind of what we were talking about in the jeté exercise, especially getting around to the back because it's very tempting to sort of mirror what this leg is doing, and then we go, oops. Yeah, so it's going the other way. You wanna feel this one going this way, this is going this way, and then I'm imagining as I get to the hard point, this one going around the other direction. Ronde de jambe de last week. One, a uh, two, and to the floor still. Four, plie now in that tendu. Five, and six, stretch. Seven, and eight. Again, one, a uh, two, arm to third this time. Three, and four, plie, five, six, and stretch, and eight. Guess what? Side, one, a uh, two, to the side, three, and four, where are your sitting bones? Are they facing the floor? Seven and eight, and same thing again. Two and three, four, plie five, exactly like the front. Seven, this time we close back. Eight, to the back. One, a two, this is a little bit different. Three and four, and just hold. You can take your hand off the bar if you like. Seven and eight, one more, one, a two and three, a four and close. Six, rising up. Seven, just when you thought you were done. Balance. Two and three, four and five, six, seven. Now, as you get to seven, I want to think I'm putting a weight a little bit more on my front foot. Seven and eight, because I turn away from the bar into first position. First, a two, and fifth, 
a four, plie five, six, and seven, eight. And we finish on the second side. So now, just one thing I want to talk to you about that turn. So it's a broken down soutenu. So what happens in a soutenu is I have to put all my weight, well not all of it, but most of my weight on my front foot so that I turn on my front so I can slide the back foot. I'll just get a little closer so I can hold on. So you can see, so I put all my weight on the front foot. I slide. I'm in first position facing directly away from the bar. Obviously your hands are here. And then I keep my weight on that same foot. So it's still on that uh, which foot was in the front, it's my right, but if you're starting on the right, it'll be your left. And then I still go and this one continues its journey and slides all the way in. Yes, so it's here, I'm on this one, I slide this, and this one's still moving, and then it closes in a beautiful fifth on the second side. Directly from fifth. Again, this time arm going up. Side. Now arm going up. Nice level hips here. A little bit different to the back. Now where's your car? Not in the ditch, I hope. Find him again. Close. Now go for your rise. Now really think of that second toe joint. Pressing into the floor. Weight on your front foot, and... Beautiful open. So halfway through that side, I realized I've spoken about that joint of your second toe a lot for doing any kind of balance or something up on demi point, but I've not actually gone into detail about it. So I thought I would. Oh, he's getting serious, the shoes are coming off. So when you go up on demi point, you like to imagine that the joint of your second toe is a continuation of your shin bone. So if I imagine my femur goes right down here and then I get right into that bony part at the front of my shin, I'm imagining that this is continuing on and going out your second toe. So that is the axis of your weight, if you will, because then that lets us have a very nice, safe demi point right in the middle where you will be able to turn and balance here. Because this, in addition to not being a good look, is a little bit dangerous. Yes, we don't want to strain any outside of your ankles. I once broke my foot landing like this, my fifth metatarsal. Tis not fun, I don't recommend it. Or likewise, we end up here, and then we have bunions the size of Montana. Yes, so you want to really make sure you get there right in that second toe so you have a nice, safe demi point. To the front. I'm going to third. To the side. Sitting bones still to the floor. Arm up. Supporting hip. Again. Now, closing fifth. Now find that second toe 
joint on both feet. Shift your gears to your front leg. Slide. Ooh, don't fall over like me. So now, battement frappe. Starting in fifth position, well, frappe and petit battement actually. We go five, six, just a breath with your arms. Seven, pick it up to coup de pied devant. Now, we do 12 petit battements. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Slowly flex your foot. Seven, eight. And then we go two frappe front. One, and two, and three, four, five. Close back and point arm down. Reverse. One, and two, and three, and four, and nine. Uh, whoa, that was not the right number. Let's try that one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Aha, he can count. And flex eight to the back. One and two, two to the back. One to the side, five. This time we close. Seven, hua chung, to finish with a little bit of style. Yes, so. For those petit battements, you can either count 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to flex, or we do two petit battements on each count depending on how you're counting. So if you're counting like I tried to do the second time and did not succeed, it goes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 5 and 6 and 7, 8, if that makes sense. to the front, one side, to the back, point, 12 again, skimming to the back, like we talked about the past couple weeks, one side, close front, finish. So going into the second side, I really want to re-emphasize, I've talked about this before, but it's always good to reiterate that this does not move. You put this, your thigh, right from your hip to your knee in a concrete mold and lift up under here and that inner thigh gets a workout. We don't want it to start coming from here, nor do we want this very attractive thing to start happening. Yes, I'm exaggerating to make a point, but we really want to keep it as totally still as possible for those pity battles. straight back in, five, and enveloppe, and seven, and eight, like we did last week. Tendu, flex it front on a plie, give yourself a stretch, so really stick those sitting bones out. Three, and four, hold five, and six, tendu, seven, and eight. Same thing to the side, one, and two, attitude, three, 
and four, bring it back in. Five and six and seven. However, we don't do that stretch to the side. We go tendu, lower second, grand plie in second. This will be your stretch. Relax. And five and six. Recover to tendu. Now turn to face the bar. You can close this foot. Seven and eight. Now lift coup de pied back. So the same leg you've just been using. One and two. Keeping your knee at that same angle, you lift it to a very small attitude back. Three and four. Hold five and six. You just think of holding and eight. Both arms to third. One and two. Now arms allongé and leg. Stretch three and four. Just the tiniest lift of your heel to check where you are. Five and six and seven to finish there. Passe. And back in, rotate that thigh. Tendu devant. Now stick those sitting bones out, do whatever's wrong, but just as long as it feels good. Recover. Attitude to the side. Tendu side. Lower second. Grand plié. Relax. Facing the bar, same leg. Now just hold. Arms off. Everything out. Are you forward, little test? Prior to heading into the other side, I want to talk about this attitude for a moment. So attitude position, you want to think almost as if you could serve, I don't know, serve a, ooh, a lovely glass of champagne on your heel at the front, yeah? So if I were to place it here, sort of if you can imagine a champagne flute there, I would be able to keep it on balance, yes? Otherwise, Oh dear, Veuve Clicquot on the floor. Yeah, so you really want as much as possible to have a heel that you could serve champagne on. Could you serve champagne on that heel? Ooh, I'm not sure I could. Go for your stretch. Same thing side. Attitude. Going side. Grand plié. Starting in fifth position. Five and the six, a seven and eight. Either with an arm or just with your arm in second. We go. Grand back on front, a two, holding three and four and a five, six, 
a seven and eight. Three in total. One, a two, open your arm, three and four, plie five, five, I meant front or five. Lift coup de pied to close back. Six, to the back, seven, eight. And then we go to the side. So side, closing front, and a three, four, and a side, closing back, seven, one more. Side, closing front, three, and four, turning to face the bar, change your legs. So the leg you were just using, six, seven, and eight. Now we go grand battement to the back. So one, a two, a three, and a four. Remember that sphere in your chest, moving forward and rolling up. Three in total, two, a three, and four, this time back to front. Five, six, seven, guess what? Other leg, one, a two, ooh, don't push on your bar. And four, and a five, six, seven, and eight. Third time, two, a three, and a four. Plie five, six, seven, and eight to finish. Grab up off front. Really brush the floor. Plie. Closing back. Side. Closing front. One more time. Facing the bar. Leg you were just using to the back. As high as you can, while still keeping everything in line. Plie. relatively new thing. So I just want to do a little quick recap. Remember we've talked about the sphere inside the center of your sternum, which if you imagine it sort of has that nice round shape, moves slightly forward and then rolls slightly upwards as you take your leg to the back. But also you want to think about a two-way stretch in your leg. So when your leg is going to the back, I'll just show you with a low leg. You not only want to imagine that you're reaching out the back, sort of right down to your toes, but you also have to imagine reaching the other way. So I'm also reaching here in the opposite direction of my leg, sort of reaching towards the sky up with that same diagonal line. So you really feel a nice stretch through your body. Then you'll get a beautifully extended leg out to the back for your arabesque. Plie, quick up. Last time side, facing the bar, same leg to the back. Are you feeling that two-way reach? Plie. Other side. into our very last thing for today. A little tendu in the center slash preparation for pirouette. Don't be frightened. So, starting in fifth, we go five, six, and a seven, eight. Lift your front foot, coup de pied. One, and a two, tendu front, and four. Again, five, six, and a seven, Eight. Three in total, one, two, and a three, a four, arms in second, plie five. Now you're going to turn to face that corner, a quarter turn to the right, lifting your front foot into coup de pied. Six, 
plie back and eight. Guess what? One, a two, other side, four and a five, six and a seven, eight. Third time, two and a three, a four, plie five. You're gonna turn to face the other corner, six and seven, and then a little scooch to face the front, eight. Now, we take tendu side, and you're always putting your arm in first, so your elbow and foot are facing the same direction. Going one, closing back, and three, a four, and a five, six, and a seven, eight, rise one, two, now you're going to try and lift your front foot and coup de pied in your own time. Try and find your balance, three, four, even if it's only for a millisecond, six, and place it back, and eight, and then you're going to do the same thing starting with the other leg. One, a two, and a three, a four, I'm getting very close to my console table, rising one, two, and balance, four, five, six, place back, did I make it? Ooh, only just. Coup de pied. Think of that coup de pied as getting you ready for that quarter turn. Last one. Plie. Other corner. into any kind of preparation for a pirouette. And the most important thing in any pirouette exercise, for those of you who've done them before, is some of you, you've probably done an exercise for spotting. You know where it is, where you look as long as possible here, whip your head around, find exactly the same point, and then come back to the center. So you're always looking at the same point. Even if we're not doing a full turn, that's still very important for us. So I'm here, and then I want to find right away, as fast as possible, what I'm looking at over there. And same thing when I go to the other side. It's always your eyes that need to preempt where you're going, because they will help you stay calm, stay centered, and stay zen when you're doing any kind of turn. So go back and give that exercise another go, because it does right and left, and think about really finding your eye focus. So, believe it or not, that is the end of episode four. Time sure flies when you're having fun and enjoying the power of dance at home, and I hope we can be together again soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a privilege to see you virtually. This coming Thursday, we're continuing on with our ballet classes at home with the fantastic Catherine Garrett giving you an intermediate class on Thursday, and that'll be put up at noon, so have a look out for that one. And it just brings me to say again that we appreciate you all so much, and I really hope that you'll, if you're new to us, you'll go on to the website of Canada's National Ballet School, that's www.nbs.com 
www.enb.ca to find out about all the fantastic things that we do normally when school is in session and we're running all our various programs. And I hope that you might consider either registering for some classes, coming down, being involved in some way, or contributing in any way that you can to the ballet school. We really do appreciate it so that we can bring all the wonderful joy of dance to you in multitudes of ways. So, until episode five, I will see you later. Have a great day, everyone.